So I am a professional at healing abandonment wounds in the divine feminine because I have gone through a lot myself. I'm going to share a little bit more in this video, but I want to help you to identify, do you have divine feminine abandonment wounds? And if so, where do they come from? How do you heal them and how do you move beyond them so that you can have epic, beautiful relationships with people and maybe even your twin flame? So first of all, I'm Dr. Amanda Noel. My husband said that y'all have been commenting that you want to see more of my face. I don't know. It, can I do it? Uh, will it work? Uh, mm. I, will, I will show you my face later. I'll figure out how to do it. But anyways, let's just go through these slides and then I promise I will give you a little bit more than this little circle down here. So the divine feminine represents the nurturing, intuitive, abundant, loving, and creative aspects of the universe and of ourselves. And she is so incredibly important on this planet. We are rising divine feminine. But we have all these old wounds. The collective has it, not just women, but especially those of us who are highly sensitive feminines out there. Now, this video isn't about, are you a divine feminine? We're just assuming that you are, and we are assuming that the entire universe has a divine feminine vulnerable, intuitive, creative, loving aspect, and that there's some wounding that has gone on. So let's talk about these wounds and learn how to heal them. So what is the biggest pain? What is the biggest fear of the divine feminine? It is the fear of abandonment. It's like, don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. It's intense. And those of you who I would, I would assert that those of you here, who are watching this video, you're learning about abandonment pains, you're wanting to heal them, that you are more in tune with the divine feminine and that if you're on a divine feminine awakening path, your abandonment wound has come to the surface at some point so that you could open up to the most vulnerable feminine aspects of yourself so that you could then also heal this collective trauma. So yin and yang, feminine and masculine, the masculine's biggest wound or, or fear is a fear of being engorged by the feminine. He's, a he's, he's afraid that while he needs her, he's afraid that his mother is going to start being codependent on him. He's afraid that his mother's going to eat him up in the womb. You know, her entire womb is going to crush him. And then ugh, that, that masculine energy is what pushes us out of the womb. The masculine is scared of getting in a relationship because the, the feminine love is so strong that he's afraid that his light will dim. The masculine energy is the light, the consciousness. He's afraid that he'll lose consciousness. He'll lose his Jesus codes and just suddenly be immersed in the sea of the Magdalene, the sea of, of all this beautiful nourishing love, but that he's going to just become a... P-U-S-S-Y, he's gonna to become totally dependent, a little boy again. And that actually is one of the aspects of the feminine. So when we're looking at the pain of the feminine and masculine, we have to honor the fact that we are both. And also the feminine is the masculine, the masculine is the feminine. And it's that that polarity that keeps it really juicy and in interesting. I almost said innocent, which is interesting. And so it is like this divine feminine, super, super vulnerable, tender, innocence that needs to then polarize and work well with the most aggressive alpha male energy. And that's why so many of us have this longing to have an alpha male. So many of us divine feminines want our little girl to be taken care of by a big, powerful man. I know my, my husband's been crushing it in his business. My little girl inside of me is like, oh, that's so sexy. That's so hot. Take care of me. And I have all these wounds that in the past, I wouldn't feel good enough for the alpha males. I would be the, the grown woman that would have her own business and take care of herself. So the biggest wound of the feminine is abandonment. The biggest wound of the masculine is basically he he's unable to do what he needs to do to abandon her at some point or, or have healthy separation. And so he can run out the door and she can be in fear or he could be in the door taking care of her and he's also like in his trauma because he's like I want to go I'm 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 feeling totally overwhelmed. So it's kind of a catch 22 being in the this reality, right? Being in this universe, we have to be both feminine and masculine and what I'm saying is the wounds contradict each other and it's not easy. And so if you feel a little troubled, if you struggle sometimes, if you have like 
you know, generally pretty solid mental health, but then you have those little places in there when you're trying to find your relationship and you're trying to find your balance and you just feel a little bit like, oh, mommy, what's going on? Don't worry. I work with women on all different levels and issues and I would have to say that everyone's got a little bit of this divine feminine wound or maybe even a lot, even some of the most high level A playing CEOs that have multiple seven figure companies that I work with that have total divine abundance in the 3D, they can still feel very poor because of their abandonment wounds, because they're constantly afraid of not being good enough, that someone will leave them and that they might be great at making money, but then they're scared of of really being loved and having someone. So I do this deep work with them and then suddenly they start to feel, oh my gosh, my inner child isn't in trauma. I'm not lonely all the time. So we all have these wounded children. We all have the divine feminine wounds on some level. And those of you who are brave enough to look and do this deep work and to hold her inside, it's amazing. But unfortunately, the divine feminine and many women on this planet have suffered without knowing. They've been suffering in silence with this deep abandonment wound over many generations and lifetimes. And even the the elites who make these Hollywood movies, they're feeding off of the wounds. You see these Disney movies and these little girls' eyes light up. They're watching, oh my gosh, my Prince Charming, it's going to be so great. And deep inside of them already from birth is the epigenetic fear of abandonment wound that's been there for so many lifetimes. We want our Prince Charming, but we're not set up for success of knowing how to heal it. And instead we are fed propaganda to look for unhealthy ways to heal our pain. And before you know it, people are addicted to alcohol. They're addicted to work. They're addicted to anorexia or body image or cleaning their kitchen compulsively. And they're really hiding from this deep wound inside. So here are seven symptoms, specifically divine feminine abandonment wound. What is it? One is attachment issues. The seven symptoms. The first one is an inability to bond an anxious attachment style or over attachment style. So it could be one woman expresses all three different times. I know because I remember my first boyfriend in high school, I remember we were sitting on the couch and I know we both wanted to make out. We never kissed. And I went to the I went to the ladies' room, went to the toilet, and I was like, whoa, something's something's kind of going on in my shorts. Like I'm excited here. And I was like, okay, I think I really do like this guy. Like, and it took us like three more dates before I even let him kiss me because I had such a repulsion to sexuality. I had such a fear. I wanted it. I didn't want it. My masculine was like, I want to jump his bones, but it was also like, I want to run. I'm scared to bond. And so when he finally kissed me in his his car, he, he borrowed his dad's Lexus. And I was like, oh, this is so dreamy, so perfect. He said, I love you. And I told him, uh, I had just told him that my father had never said I love you and that I had uh, so maybe some father issues. I was a pretty wise 16 year old, my first kiss at 16. And I didn't plan to tell you my first kiss story. But anyways, this guy, you know, but professes his love to me. What do I do? I have this kiss with him. And all I think about is how his tongue is like a cow tongue. And, and it's so big. And I, I didn't know tongues are so big. And I just suddenly couldn't see him ever again. And he tried calling me and I couldn't pick up the phone. Now, I sound pretty immature and it was 16 and I, I had immaturity. But I look back now and I understand that I had this inability to bond and a lot of people are like this the masculine can have an inability to bond and i didn't know at the time that i had some unresolved sexual trauma that was stuck in my lineage and so my sexual yes was connected to rape assault trauma fear abuse so my sacred yes was like oh my gosh this man might really hurt me. I'm not safe. I don't know what to do. And what's very interesting synchronistically is 10 years later, because of Facebook and all the social media, I was able to connect to a woman who went to my high school and who was friends with his twin brother. And she she actually said, you know, this, this guy, Dan, he drunk raped me in my sleep. And I, you know, I was staying at the house and I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen this person in like 15 years. But I have to say that 
I feel that if we have an inability to bond and we run and we leave the trauma behind, the men, the masculine, I should say the masculine, builds a, a hunger for a connection. He is raging for a connection. He wants the feminine and he suppresses the need and maybe he gets drunk and that's where maybe the cycle of abuse and assault is coming from. So ladies and feminines, we need to learn how to move through the inability to bond, to bond our over ability to bond, our anxious attachment, don't leave me, come here, stay and to have a healthy bond. Now I could go so deep into attachment, attachment healing. I work with clients on the level of psychic clearing, of clearing the birth because our, our womb is where we're first physically attached, energetically attached. We are literally like on mother earth, but mother earth is our mother. We're, we're in, in that core and we, we come out and hopefully we have a healthy separation with healthy breastfeeding, with healthy transitions going to out into the world. But a lot of us have very anxious uh, separations where we were forced into preschool too young, where our cords were cut in the first 30 seconds, where actually the cord blood is supposed to run. We only get uh, one chance to get those stem cells, but because of the elites wanting to cut the cords and you know, some are saying that um, it's not for health and sanitation reasons. It's actually they're taking our special stem cell cord blood and selling it into big pharma, but that's a different conversation. But essentially, many of us children grow up with this uh, un unknown, a mystery illness inside of us, a mystery mental illness that we're not even aware of, which is we never got the healthy connection, the healthy bonding to mom and to dad. Those are the the symbolic figures of father, mother, God. And the house, our home is supposed to be that holy temple. And a lot of us were not treated as divine little children. We were ignored, we were forced, we were, you know, and it's normal. I'm a parent, I'm trying to raise my child with divine everything. And she's, she's got trauma, you know, like her birth was traumatic. We, she had the cord wrapped around three times, she has anxiety. I have my traumas that we're working through. So it's 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 no blame towards the parents. And if you're walking around with unhealed stuff, enough of it, it could be really hard for you if you're especially if you're looking for a deep lasting relationship and you want to be fully intimate with someone and you're not aware of these old, maybe from early childhood, or maybe even ancient wounds in your lineage and maybe even past lives and in the collective. So anxious attachment is super important to heal. Anxious attachment looks like a, a person that sabotages and pushes away connections because they're always needing that validation to feel safe. And oftentimes without knowing it, they unintentionally choose partners that are avoidant. That was me. I wanted the hot guy. I wanted the guy that made me feel so sexy. And to me, for some strange reason, my program and my brain synapses was I wanted a hot guy to be better than me. And therefore, he wouldn't call me back. He wouldn't text me as, as quickly as I would. And whenever I got that text, I felt like a winner, a million dollars. I felt like, holy what? Like, this is amazing. Let's see if I can... Uh, get back to uh, the screen thing. Jack says, hmm? hey, you can see me. <laughs> okay, he was like, it's gonna be awkward. You don't know how to do it. My husband's like my, my tech teacher. So anyways, here I am, here's my face. Um, so yeah, I, I remember like this, this pattern and it happened with, I don't wanna say, I wanna say like dozens of men. I dated a lot to get to my partner. I met him at 34 and I started dating when I was four. I brought over the boy from kindergarten and he rejected me. So many different guys. And it was this pattern where the only time I really was into a man where I was like really attracted to him was if he treated me kind of like dirt or he treated me like he didn't need me as much. Or maybe the, he seemed like he was giving me a lot on the outside, but ultimately he was giving me way less than I was giving him. And I was like, oh, that is so hot. Mm. That means I have just hit the jackpot. I have just found someone who is so worthy. It turns out 
once I deconstructed it, turns out the dude was actually not feeling good enough in himself. And we both had this self-esteem wound and he had avoidant attachment and I had anxious attachment, but I had to work that out with mentors and guides and therapists. So let's see if I can go back to what I was doing. Oh, that was so seamless. My first time. All right. So technology is not clearly one of my, my biggest strengths. I'm okay, but I could be better. All right. Two, isolation from others, family, social life, intimate relationships. So um, this has been a, a big pattern for many of my clients, and I have to admit for myself as well. Because I had anxious attachment, and I still have, um, I've healed it, and there are some times like the echoes of the past show up, and it's like, oh gosh, there's shame about it sometimes. It's like, I don't wanna be this needy person. I don't want him to need me. So I will have those issues sometimes pop up. They're rear their ugly head in my relationship with my partner, or even I'll have clients that accidentally forget the appointment time or you know something happens and they're like, I'm not able to meet for a while and there's a miscommunication. And it's like, my first reaction might be, oh, it's so painful to be abandoned. And the first reaction, the next reaction after feeling the pain might be like, I don't want to feel the pain. I don't need it. So that's not going to be healthy. What we want to do is we want to feel the heal. So a quick tip here is if you have an abandonment wound, probably, and you have this isolation from others, maybe you are you call yourself a lone wolf, you're a total introvert. Um, it It's good to be an introvert to some level, but if it's really harming, is it harming your business? Are you wanting a relationship and you you say that you want it, but getting out dating is really painful. So a tip is to actually feel your rejection, pain, feel the abandonment wound. So if you go on a date and someone doesn't call you back instead of like, oh, I don't care. I'm not gonna go on a date again, or I don't care about that person. I'm not gonna call them. <sighs> Feel the rejection, feel it searing in your third chakra, feel the whack on your, your head that's like, I'm not good enough, the entity that's like the demon, you suck. Feel it all and come into that divine love and clear it. The first step to clearing it is to feel it. And if we can't feel it, if we just keep pulling away, then we never get to the root of it. So one of the tools that I, I use and I encourage my clients to use is instead of if someone abandons you and it doesn't feel good and you don't feel clear about why it happened, is to express yourself. Hey, you know, you said you were gonna call me um, on Thursday and it took you like two months to, to call me back or to text me back. And, you know, I imagine you might be really busy in your life, but I have to be really honest. I was sitting there waiting for your text and we've known each other for seven years. You're a dear friend of mine. I felt sad, like I felt hurt. I felt like my need for respect wasn't met. So I, I do that with my friends, my family members, and it really helps to get to the root of the matter. And actually a couple weeks ago, I did this with an old friend of mine. She's like a deep soul sister. And she messaged me back this long text and was like, you know, it's nothing personal. I'm going through extreme trauma right now. My ex-husband is trying to take custody of my son and I didn't message you because I had all the shame of all the trauma I'm going through, but I really do appreciate you. And I just like fully owned, wow, it's not that she doesn't love me. It's that she's not available. And hearing that I can feel her love versus going into a story. So the past self in me would go, uh, not good enough. She's so important because she's got, you know, she's got this kind of celebrity popular, lots of high level entrepreneurs and um, gorgeous men want to support her. She's just, she's naturally like stunningly beautiful and naturally just a magnetic personality. And she shared vulnerably with me this other side of her and it, it allowed me to see her vulnerability. So if we could all do this, we can clear our abandonment wounds together. How nice is that? Three is difficulty feeling safe in the world. And this symptom is something that we might not like go, oh, I don't feel safe in the world. Although now post COVID, I think a lot of people have been like, oh, okay, PTSD is like a real thing. And um, we're getting back in our, in, I think we've most of us have gotten back in the groove and getting out there and not afraid of catching 
little colds and flus. Um, but I'm talking about like a sense of safety, a sense of can you express your voice openly? Uh, a lot of women express their voice and they have a pain in the back of their neck or, or they speak with their, their throat or they have to drop their voice and be more masculine. I was giving a reading to a client the other day and she was telling me about how um, she used to close down her voice and I was reading the past for her and I said, you know, I'm glad you healed it because I see that when you were talking to people and editing yourself and trying to um, give them what they wanted and not give yourself, like I see throat cancer was going to happen. So good job. She's like, actually, I had throat cancer and I had to treat it. And um, <clears throat> it was it was like the scariest thing. So ooh, let's all do a psychic clearing of anywhere where we haven't spoken our voice, <clears throat> where we haven't felt safe to speak our voice. How are you? and also singing so feeling safe in the world is huge if we can actually incorporate sound healing more into our lives i didn't feel safe in the world doing what i'm doing here i still am working on safety in the world because i have had black magic attacks and i was told that my i would be killed my father would be killed and very synchronistically, like clockwork, he got sick. And then I was going through a series of diseases. So I've worked through a lot of different things. And my most recent thing that knock on wood, I just cleared, you might've been following my channel, was I was diagnosed with a cyst this weekend. I believe I cleared it. In my left ovary, I had this cyst and um, I went to a Balinese like traditional healer. And uh, let's see if we can see my face here because I'm so happy to share this with you. Um, so the Balinese healer said to me, he said, I don't know what you, he, he had no idea what was going on in my body. Like from my verbal, I didn't say, I have this going on this. He just scanned me, medical healer. He said, you have recently cleared like an issue with sleep. Sometimes you get migraines. I've had them for 20 years. They've reduced them by like 80%, Woohoo! which is amazing. Um, but he said, you have black magic in your womb. And I was like, well, actually I might. And he's like, have you had any symptoms? And I said, yes, I was diagnosed with this 4.8, I forget if it's millimeters or sentiment, probably millimeter uh, cyst. And I have pictures of it and I have like a couple months to clear it. And he said, uh, well, yeah, you're, you're under attack right now. And he, he and another healer tried to heal it. They couldn't do it. And I actually didn't feel his energy was really coming from the light. So I stopped working with him. And this weekend I just, I called in, I was like, I'm ready to heal this. I'm done with trying different things that don't work. I'm going to acupuncture every week. I'm doing all these amazing things. And I just happened to have a, a housewarming party. And my friend Dharmadev, who's this amazing sound healer and my friend Anne, who's this amazing sound healer. And, and they help us with facilitate our retreats. They're like, since it's your house, we want to honor you, Jack and Amanda lay down on the floor. We're going to give you the sound healing. So I lay down on the floor with my husband and I kid you not, I had like a full on like entity, like birthing out of my womb. I had some weird, uh, wiggling and my nanny saw it. She was holding my daughter on the, uh, she was in the circle. It was a singing circle. They were doing sound healing, singing. And, um, the two really advanced sound healers, well, actually all the, uh, no, sorry, all of them were really advanced. Um, yeah, all of them were really advanced sound healers. They, they were projecting these codes and I could see them and some of it was alien language. And I asked afterwards, I was like, where are you channeling from? He's like, serious. <laughs> but I mean, he was saying things that sounded so extraterrestrial. If you hear like extraterrestrial movies or watch movies and you hear the language, um, or if you you watch videos on YouTube, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you can see the codes. So I'm like fully clearing this, this gray alien energy from my, my womb, this black magic. And my nanny says, I saw your womb like moving. It looked like it was like, like a bubble or something like moving. And I was like, yeah, that was not gas. <laughs> like it was so crazy. And, um, all of a sudden, like the pain stopped, the the feeling of, ah, I have this weird thing in here. So I'm excited to get the scan now. I have a three month follow up coming up pretty soon. So to be honest, I would say one of the ways to heal 
our deep core wounds that we might not even be aware of, we've been working on them for so long, is coming together in community and doing these intuitive healings. The the people in the circle, they know not to get in their head, they just channel it. And what happens in community, if you're working with other high level light beings, like I'm sure you are, we hang out with other uh, like attracts like, right? Then the power is is incredible. That said, you know, one of the people uh, I bumped into him yesterday at dance. He said, "I'm so glad to hear about your healing." He's like, "Had you met me a year ago, I was channeling all kinds of weird light language. Some of it was kind of dark." So, um, he did have to learn and and be trained, and he's going through like facilitation for different healing modalities. All right, so we're gonna go back to the slides and see how I do it difficulty feeling safe in the world so how safe do you feel i've been on a whole journey uh on my awakening path as a priestess realizing who i am and having information come to me in dreams and getting training and the more that i'm like oh, i have a big purpose the scarier it is because i have to face heavier energies and if you resonate with that give me a comment if you have fear about being on your full purpose and it's the same with your twin flame what the bigger you are the more bright you are the more you have to face your wounds your fears your uh your damaged self ego self and the more you have to be open to shining love on it and being loved as the um, unconditionally loved as the pure human you are the imperfect human that's perfect Number four, the sign of chronic health issues or stress-related illnesses. So ovarian cyst, it's related to stress because it's hormones. Hormones are related to stress. Any, any chronic health issue is related to stress. So, um, But if you definitely have been under stress and you start having issues, we're often abandoning ourselves if we are workaholics, if we're perfectionists, if we're working too hard. So um, I know when I've been a perfectionist, it, um, it kind of comes in all forms. It, it trickles over into all the areas of my life, including like I'll start cleaning every pan in the kitchen like so compulsively and the bathroom has to be perfectly clean. And then with my relationship, I could be harsher on my partner and then I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. And then all of a sudden, up, oh, getting, getting a flu like every month or something goes out of whack. So that's part of why I moved to this beautiful island, this magical island of Bali, because healing is um, healing is everywhere. There's beautiful healing ley lines and healers and $10 massages everywhere. And time is just so much more abundant. So it's a real challenge living in in the world that we live in. Yet yeah, we can create our world. We can choose. Do we need to work with all these clients? I've recently had a couple of clients telling me that they've stopped working with lower caliber clients. You know, no, normally in the past they would people please. So can you let when you let go of your fear of abandonment? You're not people pleasing everyone and going, don't leave me, don't leave me. I need your money, I need your Discerning, be self-loving, set boundaries. So when we don't set these boundaries, we're not setting them energetically and that's where the health issues can come in. We start making deals with the devil. We start integrating our energies with low integrity beings and agreements and not having good, uh, even like business agreements and we start over giving so it's super important if you have divine feminine abandonment wounding to tighten up your boundaries and that will help with chronic health because i think so many people have been through health issues to find out okay that wasn't really about my body as much as it was my body expressing a symptom of my soul does anybody agree with that right also our our health is speaking to us it's saying here's how i feel emotionally can you listen so sometimes we need our left ovary to say i'm freaking scared and i want my soul family to come in i don't want to be doing this alone that's what happened for me i had this group of friends my ovary called it in and now i'm like okay guys we're going to be meeting every month because when you guys left the house it, the energy in the house felt amazing we have this new beautiful home we had a house warming my house literally feels like full of light and rainbow energy i realized i don't i don't need to just have 
uh, my sole purpose mission be me? I want to collaborate more. So what does your body say? What is the illness maybe happening? A lot of people have autoimmune issues, chronic um, colds, flus, allergies, gluten issues. Well, I, I mean, the gluten is toxic, so sorry. <laughs> They've added, what did they increase the gluten by 50% just so the, the farmers and slash the big uh, agro business people could make more money and then all of us are like, having cancer and cancel cancel hello no i'm just not gonna eat your crappy wheat i'm gonna just switch to quinoa and taking out grains from my diet anyways feel way better in my body have those nice sweet potatoes baby um but yeah a lot of women struggle with um adrenal fatigue and even mental health issues because of an unhealed abandonment wound that is winding them up and creating imbalance in all areas of their lives and their body ends up suffering too. Okay, mother wounds. I talk about mother wounds and father wounds. Father wounds should be on here too, but I'm just going to say mother wounds is maybe a little bit more relevant to this topic of divine feminine abandonment. Not really. Father wounds should be on here as well. I just picked one because, you know, hey. Um, but basically, the mother wound is going to, one, uh, your relationship with your mother and the way you feel about your mother, maybe your mother has passed on or maybe you didn't know your mother, but your relationship to her, regardless, even if you're adopted, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful she gave me life. Or maybe you're like, that B-I-T-C-H, I hate her. She's awful. She abandoned me. So the way you feel about your mother is going to mirror into your health. Research shows that people that are very angry at their mothers, resentful, um, fathers too, um, they will have reduced health. So a lot of people struggling with uh, disease need to look at their mother and father wounds and come into a place of peace, acceptance, understanding, and yes, gratitude. So there's a lot of deep work that goes into healing mother wounds. Mother wounds, um, the mother represents everything to us when we're little. She is like the divine mother creator being. She's created the universe. She gives us milk. She gives us her womb, her home. And before we are verbal, before we can see, before we can even really understand, taste, smell, hearing, you know, all of it. We're just like these primordial beings that are in her water and all we feel is mama and she's amazing. And then we're born, we're separate and we go from the Garden of Eden into, woo, hey, we're in the matrix, right? And we can have that rage and say, you are Eve who bit the apple. Why did you kick me out of your womb? The umbilical cord, the snake. So we have to understand that our mother did the best that she could. And she is amazing. The fact that she conceived and gave us life, even if that's the only thing she gave us, even if she walked away and she was a horrible mother, you're alive and you chose her. And your mother is a holographic mirror of your consciousness. So if you chose an awful mother, maybe it's part of your journey to unconditionally love the awful 3D mother in you so that you can embody the divine mother and then repattern your lineage, repattern yourself, repattern your thoughts. And in relationship, we are mothers to our partners. We don't change their diapers, hopefully not. Well, maybe later in life we will, but um, we don't um you know have to do the things like bathing and feeding them like you do with the baby but symbolically energetically we are we're nurturing ourselves and our partners and the biggest challenge i i feel as as mothers is how do you give to yourself self-care and give to your child or therefore in a relationship how do you balance self-care with caring for the relationship caring for your partner and if you have a mother wound where your mother overgave, your mother didn't give enough, where your mother was bipolar, where your mother was always critical, those patterns will regurgitate into your relationship until you feel to heal them. And working with guides, working with angels, working with a counselor, doing the deep work is so fundamental in healing the abandonment wounds and cleaning up your relationship space. Six, difficulty expressing emotions. So a these are the symptoms of divine feminine abandonment is suppressing feelings. Now, I didn't know I was suppressing my feelings. I thought I was a child of two therapists and I was great at um, talking about feelings. I would always ask my partners how, even in high school, I'd be like, how do you feel? Let's talk about this. You know, we have to, we can't just hide our emotions. 
But I didn't know, due to some serious father wounds, my father had father wounds, he was abandoned by his father, um, his father worked for the mafia, and the mafia, Jewish mafia, was rather dangerous, and I think my grandfather probably kept my dad away from that drama so to protect his safety and to have him not see that dark secret. And um, the, my ancestors escaped severe poverty and persecution and came over here and the only jobs that were available were hey do you want to work for the mafia and I think my grandfather wanted to get out of it but he didn't know how and so anyways I had this wound of like why won't my dad show love and my dad was struggling with the wound is why did my dad leave me and abandon me and um, all this depression and grief was was in the field of love and so I was attracted to men who would hide their feelings and I would always want to know do they love me do they do you love me and they wouldn't be able to show it they wouldn't be able to say it we they'd have we'd have these awkward conversations and eventually they'd say amanda you know you're a great person you're a good person for someone else why don't you move on or they would just ghost me or they would breadcrumb me and and eventually i would say okay this enough is enough i have to like have some respect for myself here but it wasn't until I could express my emotions clearly and I use my voice to express them. I felt them inside, which is the inner expression, and then I outwardly emoted them, expressed them clearly, not in a rageful, you jerk, why didn't you call me back? But when you didn't call me back, I felt hurt. I don't wanna feel hurt. I don't wanna be in a relationship where I'm waiting around and being hurt and it's happened five times already and it hasn't gotten better. So I, I love you, I appreciate all the growth we've had and this is too painful for me so we set boundaries but if it's not communicated early on in the game then you can train your partners hey don't call me back or call me back late or um you know i ask you for something and you don't give it to me that's totally fine so we need to express our true feelings and we have to know inside ourselves what we feel and i was so suppressed in my feelings i didn't even know I didn't know. And then it would explode. And then I'd be like depressed. No, they left. And I was hurt and all this drama. So sometimes we're a little bit of both. And it could be like a bipolar energy in, in a relationship where like you're high and then you're low when they break up. So if you have these like high tides, low tides things, look at tools to express your emotions and to inner express them. Never feeling enough. So um, who here struggles with never feeling enough? I have to say that um, there is no correlation between what you do and how you feel. Because I know people that are working in the rice fields and they have very high self-esteem here and, and they have this beautiful smile on their face and they play with their grandchildren. and and they're farmers, right? They have a like a simple life and they have very little financially to their name and yet they're happy, they're in the sun, they're joyful. And I know people that have multiple million dollar incomes that have their kids in the perfect schools and they have their high rise apartments or, or mansions or homes in, in Italy and they never feel enough and they've, achieved so much on paper so it's not about how much you achieve it's about how much you love yourself and appreciate yourself and that self-love is easier to access if you had two healthy parents who gave you healthy attachment where your father and mother wounds weren't severe and where the ancestral lineage was pretty clear and there were no you know really big traumas like adoptions is a big trauma death um i had a couple of deaths in my family that created this ripple effect of ptsd so my mom was always like oh my god don't die she would call me every day um at a friend's house be like, why didn't you call me where were you i thought you're i'm like i'm in seventh grade i can't remember to call you she's like oh, i was gonna call the police you're two hours late this anxiety um, was coming not from my mother, but from her, her people, her lineage that had had some really devastating losses of children. And she was in that field and she experienced uh, seeing her sister lose two children in, in car crashes. So um, when it comes to 
feeling enough, we want to have our parents feel enough and give that enoughness to us. A lot of times our parents artificially feel enough. You know, I, I, I relate, maybe you relate to, to me, I came from two pretty high achieving parents that worked their butts off and provided food on the table, went to college, went to get their master's degrees, put their kids through college. And yet they were coming from wanting to achieve this dream for the next generations because they didn't have that safety and love in their previous, in their childhood and their parents didn't have it in their childhood. So there's this, this low vibrational self-worth that can really be like a, a toxic um, stop sign on the edge of our auras pushing our, our relationships away, loving relationships or client relationships, twin flame soulmate, doesn't matter. But when we love ourselves and we have that security in ourselves, or at least if we have the hope for it and desire for it, we can then heal the mother and father wounds. But sometimes it does help to have soul family, to have a soul soul mate, a soulmate mentor, to have people come into your lives to help support. I have noticed that I make a lot of progress on my own, but there's a certain level where there's a gap where I can't go all the way unless I have a mentor, unless I have soul family supporting me. And if that's, the case then great because I can do it I don't need to be everything to uh to myself even it's about relationships so let's go to number number seven if there's anything else so never feeling enough honestly uh, I went through a little bit of energy the last couple of days where I gave myself a few days off because I had worked really well. Actually, I hit my goals. I've, I've hit the goals of I'm on the marketing calendar. I'm doing all the things I need to do. And on the days off, I was like, I need to be doing something. I need to like check my phone. And I'm all about embodying divine feminine self-care. And I was like, oh my gosh, today, like I did 20 minutes of checking my my emails and, and my marketing calendar and um, I don't have any clients scheduled today. It's it's my day to go to ecstatic dance. So I went and ecstatic danced. And I was dancing through this like, ah, I'm supposed to be doing something. What am I doing? And I realized I'm on a dance floor with all these people and we're all just dancing. We're not trying to do anything. It wasn't one of those like ballerina performances. And there was this like machine in me that's like, I got it. I'm supposed to be doing something. What am I supposed to be doing? So what was really awesome is I just observed that and I sat with it. And I was like, wow, why don't I just sit in the discomfort? This feels really uncomfortable. And the more I danced with it, the more I got into this wave of like, it's totally okay. So I think a lot of us are healing from never feeling enough. I can speak for myself that I'm on this side of the journey where I have financial freedom. I have enough clients. There's always enough abundance from the universe that I've learned to manifest and I can trust that. I've, I've trusted it over the last 15 years and it, I've been self-employed. Well, there was some times at the very beginning where I had to go back. Uh, but for the last 10 years, I've been self-employed and, and I know that I can create whatever I want and I know that, how do I say this? It doesn't matter what I do. It has nothing to do. My feeling good enough has nothing to do with how great I am or how many likes I have. And just sitting with, like, it doesn't matter. It's pretty intense. Because in the past, when I first got started, I would look at the likes, the views, the the success. And just this morning, I was, like, typing in a hashtag. And there was, like, this hashtag of a company that um, this couple that they, they interviewed me. They're like, hey, like... Um, we're twin flames too and we want to set up a twin flame business and they're like multi-millionaires and apparently they're a cult and people are suing them for really horrible things that supposedly they're doing they're going to be made into a hulu series um so but anyways there's a part of me that's like oh my gosh their hashtag has like 78 million like what is it called 78,000 not that a million but 78,000 uh, just on their hashtag, like the name of their business. And I was like, you know what? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. There's part of me that thinks that I needed to do everything as a twin flame mentor. I was one of the very first people in this industry and my, my channel is like a little bit sleepy and cozy right now. 
but I'm like, oh my gosh, but look at my life. Like I, I did this mission because I want to help people and I wanted to have an abundant life and I have an abundant life and I know that I'm doing my service the best that I can. And I've heard a lot of wonderful, I've seen a lot of people meet their twin flame and have a lot of healing. And I think just being who we are is enough. So let this be a prayer for, we are enough as long as we show up and try our best. We do our best. We, we show up from the light and from love. And if the universe rewards other people for acting out of integrity or for being more skillful than us or to be more confident, we don't need to compare ourselves because my enoughness is different than their enoughness and that's okay. We can honor. So yeah, how can you feel enough no matter what you do or where you are? You can do something like this. Enough is enough and hug yourself and say, I am enough. So the unhealed divine feminine abandonment wound can weigh on physical, mental, emotional bodies, make finding a healthy relationship difficult or nearly impossible. But the good news is that there are ways to heal this pain by reconnecting with the divine feminine energy within ourselves and allowing it, allowing this to guide us towards self-love, acceptance, and empowerment. And eventually that will mirror into your twin flame union or instantly it will. So the rise of the divine feminine is so important. It's happening on the planet all over the world. You are holding the light codes of the divine feminine. And it can be very tempting to give into the old masculine patriarchal systems and to just hustle and push and abandon who we are and do things maybe out of integrity with ourselves, out of integrity with the divine feminine. Even I see people that maybe have um, channels about the divine feminine and they're doing videos and they have all this like, Botox and they're fitting into the old paradigm feminine and um, but it, it works to get a lot of viral views because people love the old uh, masquerading feminine. The media has controlled our minds to believe that we have to look like Barbie and so they might be um, portraying and giving into this old paradigm feminine not really um, honoring the true aspects of the feminine, which include the messiness of the wildness. Mother nature, the feminine is wild. You know, I have beach hair. I have, I have wild hair because I realize if I put all my, all my extra change into um, expensive hair treatments that are toxic for the environment, and I, I told other women that they have to spend hours in the salon every month, it, it just wasn't in alignment with my values. Maybe that is for some women, maybe they love it. Maybe they're, they're artists and, and hair artists. There's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I was like, how can I rise the divine feminine in a way that's in integrity for me? That's why I don't do my nails before I had all these beautiful shellac nails and it looked really polished and professional, but I didn't like the smell. I didn't like the feeling of having to go in and um, it wasn't something I enjoyed. I'm all about pleasure. So the divine feminine hidden aspects are pleasure, our true sensuality, our, our messiness, our, our not having to care, not having to be so organized, not having to book a salon visit every week to, to do the nails. Seven ways to heal the divine feminine. I'm going to go through these fast embodiment practices that connect you to your power. So not trying to do a jazz class and get the rhythm right. There's nothing wrong with that. That's could be super fun. But I'm talking about having a practice that really allows your intuition to flow. Am I moving my arm here? Sometimes the power yoga can be oppressive. I did a lot of power yoga, sweat, uh, you know, hot yoga. Um, it got me a fit looking body that had a lot of hormone imbalance issues and I would have to take off one month every week for my migraines. And then I actually gave up that style of yoga, I worked with an embodiment coach and I started with these very slow nourishing movements and I was like, oh gosh, this isn't strong enough. And now I'm stronger than ever. I go to dance a couple times a week and I'm like, this is the strongest I've ever been because my embodiment practices helped me to turn on muscles that I was ignoring that were turned off from trauma. So two is to connect to things that won't leave you, that'll fill you up. So nature is a big one. I remember when I was asking a psychic, I was like, will my twin flame come back? It wasn't even my twin flame, it was a counterfeit, but will this guy come back? She's like, 
you know what? What you need right now is you need stability. Why don't you go on a date with the trees? Go out hiking in the redwoods. We lived in Marin County, California. She's like, go out hiking and hug a tree. And I did, and it felt really good. And I felt the energy. And then I adopted a dog, Hazel. She is epic. She's in the sky now. She's a, a spirit guide of mine. But I, I cry about her like, I'm like, I love her so much. Unconditional love from a dog, unconditional love from uh, you know, humans are great too, but they do leave us. You know, we have, uh, and, and the dog left me too. But especially like if you can connect to the medicine of nature, something that will always be there. Now, nothing will always be there. So you might need to be a little flexible too. Um, but you get what I mean. Reach, reach out to the past people who abandon you for healing. So I did that with a couple of people. I actually did it with that guy before I knew that he raped Apparently, he raped um, a mutual friend of ours in high school. Um, before I knew he did that, I reached out and I apologized. And I was like, I'm so sorry for abandoning you. It was so awkward what I did. I was only 16. I hope you're doing really well. And he Facebooked me like right away. He was like, oh my gosh, let's get together. And I'm like, God, I think I really wounded him because he's like still, still kind of maybe into me. Um, sometimes that that would happen to me too i would have crushes on guys in high school and like still and i actually reached out to my first like um my first love as you call it when you lose your um your innocence and i reached out to him before i got married and i was like i just need to know you know you're my first love did you ever really love me or were you just using me because you moved on so fast um, I had been looking to have that conversation for years and i found him on instagram just randomly pop up and um, I'd never found him before. And he messaged me right away. And he was like, I did love you. I, I will always love you. I send you so much love and blessings for your marriage. He's like, to be honest, you know, I got divorced a couple years ago. And my um, ex moved on to another partner, just had a baby. And I'm still looking at myself. And I was like, wow, you know, that was exactly what I needed to hear. Um, and I, I hope he's moved on and found his happiness and found love. Um, but he would move on he moved on to another woman right after me and i always felt like oh he he really liked the other woman more than me and i wasn't enough and i had all these stories and then i realized oh we both had lots of wounds it was just a trigger pattern so reach out to the past clear the cobwebs you know like you, maybe there are things that you were scared to say back then because you didn't want to be abandoned but you can just be like hey like why didn't you call me back i was waiting i had somebody do that to me on like a match.com date and i was just really honest it was like yeah, like I, I felt like you're you're too conservative for me. And he's like, oh, I love my conservativeness. Thank you for sharing that. I thought it was something else. And he just like moved on. Four, reconnect in women's circles to connect to connect to your power. So connect in women's circles. We've been doing this for thousands of years. Oops, until recently, the last like thousand years, we've stopped connecting in women's circles. The church kind of had us go... Uh, or you know the culture of this um, patriarchal stuff. So women were meant to be gathered. We're once upon a time gatherers, and we would gather together around the moon. You see women in Bali going every every moon ceremony. They the women go here, the men go there. The women are working with flowers and magic and priestess energy. So beautiful. And if we don't connect with our if our in our feminine bodies with feminine energy and however you identify it's all good but come and celebrate so that's why at aphrodite university we have a full moon and new moon ritual you can click the link below i think i put it in there um aphroditeuniversity.org forward slash new dash moon or full dash moon and honestly i just i go to the ceremonies and and lead them uh most of the time i've been leading them um, for a while, I took a break, but I, I do it because it helps me. I love connecting with other women, and it holds me accountable when I lead my circles, when I lead our circles, um, and I get to connect with other women on the leadership end and get to know women that are in leadership who are joining, that have their own businesses and their own journeys. So it's just so much better to do it, not alone, but in sisterhood. And I think we've all been hurt by the culture, and we've all felt abandoned and we've all been struggling to rise the feminine together and the fastest way to come back into our priestess paths is to to find that balance between autonomy and doing it together um five is connect to other single people who suffer from abandonment wounds honestly like it sucks if you are single and you have abandonment wounds and all of your friends have been married that was me for a while and it was it was uncomfortable so 
I ended up joining some sim singles events and gatherings. Um, I did have a couple of friends that were just like bitterly single and they were not really looking to change that. And I think that some of them still are bitterly single for some reason. The psychic community I was part of, a lot of women had like married their cats and maybe hadn't really like, they just wanted to be the witches on the hillside kind of thing. And that's great. I bless them. Um, but yeah, finding finding others that like want to go on dates with you, go out, you can join meetup.com, you can um, join some really awesome yoga class or gathering, get out there and then the, the singles be like, hey, I'm doing like a singles ladies night or something like that. Um, just mixes it up. And I can, <laughs> I can say one of my best memories was going to like a really high end place. I think it was like the Four Seasons Bar or um, the W Hotel. And I had like friends who were like super high end, like they drove in with their their um, Mercedes. And then I had like a friend that was wearing like the biggest like hippie, like it was like a mini skirt. But, um, but I brought all my friends together and the theme was like ladies singles night and everybody just loved each other. And we had so much fun. Nobody even met a guy there. Like we, we didn't even talk to any guys, but we were just giggling and laughing and it just lightened the mood. And we all went around like a woman's circle sharing our hearts. And I think that I met my partner not so long after that. So I feel like I benefited. Six, practice solitude in a sacred way, never leave you. I have to say that I'm constantly constantly reminding myself of this because there's so much beauty in my life. Like I wanna see what my husband and daughter are doing and then mommy runs on empty. So every morning I have a morning practice. I do part of it alone. Usually my daughter wakes up and then climbs on me. Um, and then throughout the day, I'll find moments to be alone. And I really, really benefit from having alone time. So if you have an abandonment wound, sometimes we want to surround ourselves with a lot of people or we're alone and we're kind of just like tuning out on Netflix. But if you can set an intentional time to like be with you, like you're a married couple with yourself, that's why I do sacred self-marriage rituals in Bali with my VIP clients. And I teach women how to do their self-love vows, self-marriage vows, and um, how to marry themselves with their self-marriage rings. Because if you are committed to yourself and someone does abandon you, you have that life ring that you're not feeling that much of a sting. Ooh, that rhymed. I love rhyming. Seven, explore yourself in bed to get your oxytocin up and all the other hormones. So if we're low on the happy hormones, if we're low on our O juice, if we are not climaxing to the peak of our energy, if you know what I mean, then we can get lonelier. We can get lower vibrational. Our, our chemicals can... Um, our female hormones can start to be kind of wonky. So it's important to keep our our bliss levels up and to have that sense because our brain doesn't really know if we're fantasizing about someone and we're, if we're touching ourselves. There's a part of us that believes that it's someone else touching us. And so self-touch, self-love, of course it's different. So um, if you like cuddles, invite a friend over and cuddle, cuddle with your cat, cuddle with your teddy bear. So well, it's not the same necessarily as a human person, but sometimes you, you're not there yet. You know, it's not time. So do you, you do you first and build up these energies because you're not going to bring anybody into this juicy space in your bed if you're, if you're dry as a, dry as a kite, I don't know, <laughs> dry as a bone. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your comments. I hope to see you at the love activation, sacred love activation. It is open. I have a special coupon code 777 portal, P O R T A L, all lowercase 777 portal. If you go to aphroditeuniversity.org forward slash full dash moon and what the full moon ceremony is, it happens live on the full moon. If you can't make it live because you're in Europe or something and it's the middle of the night, then don't worry about it. We'll send you a replay. And what it is, is it's a sacred space to call in your, your life partnership or activate the relationship you're in. We work with an archetype every single month that coincides with the zodiac, the archetypes of Aphrodite. We just went into the sacred courtesan archetype. So we're getting our delicious feminine rose petals, essential oils out, and we're getting into our slinky dresses and feeling beautiful. Or maybe you come in yoga clothes like I'm in today uh, because that makes you feel sensual and you're, you're into your beach hair. But we, we celebrate and discover these new parts of ourselves and we chip away at the healing and uncover the divine feminine goddesses that we are. And we come together with other women because we know that it helps us to free ourselves from the, the biggest pain, which is the abandonment wound of the feminine. We know that we have each other holding our backs. 
So I believe in you. I believe in our sisterhood. The investment in this is only $11 if you use the coupon code for the entire ceremony. It's super high value, it's packed in. And if you want to get all 12 of these, I would highly recommend you sign up today because the prices will, the, the cost will go up to uh, the full price after the 777 portal. And plus you'll get two months free. And plus we're gonna give you the bonus training of the archetypes of Aphrodite, which will help empower you as the goddess of love so you can call in your ultimate partner. It's a no brainer. So I'll put the link down below aphroditeuniversity.org forward slash full dash moon. Thank you for joining me for this whole entire video. You rocked it. I love you. Know that you're not alone in your loneliness or your pain. We're all sisters together, sisters and brothers. And it's so incredible to when you have your partner and you can work through the abandonment together and realize you both have it. You both have the fear 